Greetings fellow guitar travellers, it's Rowan J Parker here and welcome to episode 3 of I Love Legato, bringing you the best and insane left hand noodlesome goodness. We've got a very cool episode lined up for you today, it's all about wide stretch triads and the credit for this lesson goes to Mr Al Williams who is a fan of mine on YouTube and he has asked for some Sean Lane inspired or influenced material, now to be honest with you, I'm uh, nowhere near as good, good as Sean Lane, I'm a, well how can I describe it, I'm a pimple on Sean Lane's ass. However, I will attempt to play some of the wide stretch triads that he was known for and uh, you can pick up on uh, the various uh, things uh, that he, he does or did. Alright, so before we get into today's lesson, I encourage you to have a look at my website www.roundjparker.com Tons of guitar stuff on that site. There's lots of lessons you can watch and there's backing tracks you can download and jam over. There's a store where you can purchase lots of high quality HD videos and lessons all available for instant download all at very reasonable prices. And finally, I should say that I do Skype lessons which are becoming increasingly popular. I have students from all around the world now. So if you're interested in Skype lessons, there's a section on the website where you can get in touch with me about that. I should further say that if you subscribe to the website uh, just by sticking your email address in the subscribe box you get tons of extra exclusive subscriber only material which is tab for the lessons and lots of uh, additional videos which are not distributed anywhere else so uh, check them out it's a no-brainer my website okay so let's get into straight into today's lesson which is Sean Lane insane immense linear triads let's rock Okay, before we get into showing you the exercises, just going to give you a bit of brief background here. Uh, we've got four, four exercises, and four different triads, and all a triad is is basically just a three note chord, and there are uh, four different sorts of uh, triads that you commonly get. You get major triads, minor, uh, diminished and augmented. Uh, we're going to arrange these triads really in ascending order of difficulty for the left hand, and actually the easiest triad is a diminished triad. So we'll do the diminished triad, and then we'll do the minor, which is slightly wider, do the major, which is tricky, and then the augmented, which is truly, truly bonkers. All right, and the idea is we're going to have these same triad all mapped out along a single string. So this is gonna entail some fairly ferociously wide stretches for the left hand. Um, if you're into this sort of playing, this sort of legato playing, you like these videos, you check out the uh, book in my store, the video in my store, which is called Hammer Time, which is all about legato in great depth. So plug for my product there. However, uh, get back to what we're doing today. Taking our triad, stretch them all out along a single string, and I've just attempted to play them parallel, so they're all kind of nonsensical, really. They're great left hand development exercises, and also they're fantastic for um, terrifying all your guitar playing mates because they just sound truly, truly crazy and insane and they look amazing as well. And uh, for those of you that are not into these wide stretches, if you see someone do it, it just looks uh, it looks crazy. You just can't understand how someone can possibly do that. But of course it can be done with a bit of practice and it's even cooler. Of course, if you can do it with just one hand, then that's the goal here, just to use left hand only. All right, so I think that's enough explanation. Without further ado, let's launch straight into exercise one, the diminished triad. Here we go. Okay, here is the first exercise. It is parallel diminished triads. So I'll demonstrate it to you first of all at eighth note triplets and then ramping up to semi quaver triplets and the metronome set here at 160 BPM. Okay, so here we go. So let's just go ahead and show you the basic shape. Since it's parallel, it's the same shape on every string. You've got uh, fret 9, 12 and 15. I'll just watch it for you. You've got frets 9, 12 and 15. And the digitation is 1, 2, 4 and it's the same on every string. So it's just this. Now initially this might feel like a bit of a stretch for the left hand, but you just reach your index finger back and it's not too bad. You might notice I'm also elevating the neck of the guitar so it's a little bit higher than I would normally have it. And later on when we do the, you know, the, the even wider stretches, it's gonna be all the way up here so I can get the span. So if you're struggling, if you're sitting down like this and you're struggling to get the stretches, then just elevate the guitar neck, it'll make it a lot easier. All right, so that's our basic pattern, which is just loads of fun to muck around with. And we're going to shove through that our little repetitive ostinato figure. So it's this, let's have a listen. Which is high 15, 
9, 12, 15, 12, 9. That's it. And it's the same on every string. And I'm not picking at all, so I'm just hammering on with the pinky to get the notes come out. Which is not that bad uh, when you get it going. This is just uh, muting the strings if you wonder what I'm doing. I seem to do this habitually. Even though some people don't, don't seem to like me doing it, I like doing it. So there we go. Alright, so that's exercise one, which is the parallel diminished triads. Now on to exercise two. Okay, here is exercise two, parallel minor triads. Again, let's do it half tempo and then double tempo. Let's have a listen. So again, it's all parallel, same shape on every string. We've got fret numbers 10 and 13 and then 17. So just parallel minor on every string. Bit of a monster. Um, and we're going to do the same ostinato pattern that we did in the diminished one, but just obviously changing the notes to adjust. So got that. Minor now. Alright, so that is going to be high E 17, and then uh, 10, then 13, then 17, then 13, then 10. And the digitation here is uh, 4, 1, 2, 4, 2, 1. So this is quite a demanding stretch for the old left hand. Alright, now uh, these all map out various sorts of arpeggios. So we've got like a D minor arpeggio. And then uh, we'd have a uh, an A minor arpeggio, and then I guess this would be an F minor arp, and then we'd have a C minor arp, and then a G, and then a D. So you could probably actually use uh, something like this in an actual composition, I suppose, rather than just a gimmicky, flashy thing to do. All right, so that's exercise two, the uh, minor triads. Let's go into exercise three. Getting even more difficult now. We're on to the major triads. Let's rock. Okay, on to exercise three now. It's even more insane. It's the major triad. So once again, demoing half tempo, the double tempo. Tempo still 160, so wish me luck. Here we go. Goodness me, that's getting ferociously difficult. All right, so uh, the triad, major triad, all stretched along the single string. We have fret number 10, and then 14, and then 17, and the digitation here is fingers one, three, and four. It's an absolute beast. And uh, the ostinato pattern, same pattern, just adjusting for the different notes in the major arpeggio, but it uh, sounds like this, which is high E 17, 10, 14, 17, 14, 10, that one. Very tricky. The real problem with these ones is to try and get the articulation as the hand is opened out to an extreme extent, try and make it very even and uh, smoothly uh, developed and articulated. So that's the major one. On to the absolute beast now, the one that scares me. It's the augmented one next up. Let's do it. Okay, and here we go for exercise four, example four, the very last one, the augmented triad. I'm going to pull the guitar like almost completely vertical here to help reduce the enormous stretch on my poor old tendons. So I only have little hands. So let's attempt this one. Here we go, half tempo, double tempo. Just about managed that one. Not my finest hour, perhaps, but got around it. So uh, the the stretch here is truly insanely gigantic. It is uh, fret number ten, and then fourteen, and then eighteen. It's that one. It's ginormous, and of course parallel. So it's across all six strings. Ouch. All right, and then the ostinato pattern inside it. You so you've got uh, um, fret eighteen, pulling to fret ten, hammer on fret fourteen. 
hammer on 18, pull 14, pull 10. That's it. This one you definitely need a ton of gain for to get the uh, notes to compress and come out. <laughs> it's very hard with a clean sound. All right, well, that concludes all four. Hope you enjoyed them and hope you found the, you know, the, the left hand is starting to develop somewhat. Uh, we're just going to do the wrap up now, all right? Okay, we hope you enjoyed that lesson very much. I realise the material is difficult, but if you persevere with it, you will get it together. A couple of things that occurred to me uh, just before I sign off. If you sit with the guitar like this habitually, you're going to find trying to reach over the guitar and get these stretches very, very difficult, if not impossible. So I seriously suggest that you elevate the neck of the guitar, either get a footstool underneath uh, your leg or a box or something like that, or you can even just hold the guitar neck up in a more vertical position because it will help to reduce this tension on your tendons and to make the stretches less uncomfortable and also because these stretches are very demanding for the left hand you want to be careful you don't hurt yourself otherwise you'll need to go to rehab okay so uh, that wraps up for this lesson just encourage you one more time to look at my website www.rowanjparker.com tons of cool stuff if you're interested in Skype lessons uh, get me through the website and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the website lots of free material okay well thank you very much thank you for watching I will see you next time for episode 4 of I Love Gato. Farewell!